Shopping with Susan is about choices. Choices you can make to help you get lean, strong, and healthy. First, we'll start at Susan's, where she'll show you how to defat your kitchen, getting rid of all those food items you think you can't live without. Susan will show you that by making the right choices and the right substitutions, you won't have to feel hungry and you won't feel deprived. Then it's off to the grocery store, where aisle by aisle, Susan shows you how to shop for you and your family. How to use Susan's famous fat formula, and most importantly, she'll give you the skills to make you an informed consumer. It's just you and Susan in the grocery store, shopping together. After your marathon shopping trip, it's back to the kitchen to take stock of what you bought. Here, organization's not the key. It's learning that there is so much available to you right in your neighborhood market. From low-fat potato chips to frozen foods, you'll have a kitchen stocked with high-volume, low-fat food. Once you've gotten your kitchen in order, Susan will show you a typical menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And finally, Susan's going to answer some of your most commonly asked questions. Susan did her Shopping with Susan video so she could share her message of defatting, shopping, and restocking. So, let's get started. Hi, my name is Susan Powder. You know, the lady who tells you to eat. Sometimes softly, sometimes a little loudly, but it's because I believe so strongly in what I'm about to tell you. You guys all know that dieting doesn't work, and you know that deprivation doesn't work. That never worked for me. Every time I went on a diet, you know where I ended up? I ended up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, shoving food in my mouth. Deprivation, the first symptom of deprivation is binging, and that's where I always ended up. Shopping with Susan is about convenience, it's about simplicity, but mostly it's about fat, because that's the thing that you need to know about in order to reduce the amount of fat that you've got on your body. But wait, I'm not asking you to do something as dramatic as totally emptying the cupboards. All I'm asking you to do is to get rid of some of those foods that you think you can't live without. So we're going to find out how to find fat. We're going to find out how to cook with lower fat. It's not food that makes you fat. It's fat that makes you fat. The first thing we've got to do is get rid of the oil. Saturated, unsaturated, good, bad, heart attacks, right, wrong. What is it all about? No wonder you're confused. I was. I'll tell you what the bottom line is for you and I. The bottom line is that saturated or unsaturated, all oil is 100% fat. Butter, how do we live without this? Butter is 99% fat. Eggs, think about it. What do you do without eggs in your life? Eggs are 63% fat. Open the freezer and you've got the ultimate culprit, ice cream. Ooh, ice cream that's over 30% fat, get rid of it. And how do you know? Use your fat formula. Remember, it's number of fat grams times nine equals X. X divided by the total calories will tell you how much fat is in each serving. So use your fat formula throughout your kitchen. And there's this creamy white stuff. Just because your creamer says no cholesterol and non-dairy, it doesn't mean that it's low in fat. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you some great substitutions later on. How do you live without these things? You know, recently somebody asked me, Susan, do you ever cheat? Well, an example, do you ever have a banana split? Do you ever, banana split? You know what my sons and I had the other night for dinner? We had a banana split with ice cream, with toppings, and that was it, that was our dinner. And the key here is to use low-fat ice cream or yogurt for a great banana split. Now, I don't eat that every night for dinner, but it's not about cheating. You're not gonna have to worry about cheating with high-volume, low-fat eating. Do you know what Shopping with Susan is really all about? It's about taking the foods that you think you can't live without and learning how to live with them so you can be as lean, as strong, and as healthy as you wanna be. It's time to go shopping. Come on, let's go. Now this is fun. The middle of the night going shopping, come here. I called these guys and said, could I shop alone? Because I got to talk to you guys and shop alone. And they said, OK, come here. They got to get in the door. Have you ever been in anything this size alone at night? Come here. Look. Wait. Come on, 
Let's go shopping. You know what this is all about? This is all about learning how to make better choices in a grocery store. Every one of us has got to buy groceries once a week, twice a week, however often you buy them. You gotta, you gotta eat, and you gotta make the right choices. This is a great place to get started, in the butter section. A lot of us have stopped eating butter because we know it's high in fat and we know there's saturated fat. So we've gone to margarine. Well, remember the fat formula? Number of fat grams times nine equals X. X divided by the total calories? Right here, you can figure it out. We'll tell you per serving how much fat is in each serving. So let's go to margarine and let's use the fat formula and see how high in fat it is. Let's look. Number of fat grams. Well, there's 11 grams of fat in this, but we don't even have to do the formula because right after it, it says 100% of the calories from fat. So is it better than butter? Not always. You got to look. Not hard, but you got to look. There are some choices here. Let's do the fat formula on this. Let me get my calculator. Number of fat grams, zero. There it is right there. There's your choice. Spread that on your toast or your dry bagel. Right next door are the eggs. Believe it or not, you can defat eggs so easily. I'll show you when we get back to the kitchen. I'm gonna buy a dozen now. Eggs and low-fat margarine spread. Oh, the spice section, this is great. You know, all I did back there was look at the label. You'll find the brands you like and you'll find the taste you like, but you gotta turn it around, read the label and use this fat formula. Now here's an aisle I love because I love spicy food. I love Tabasco sauce and Worcestershire sauce and peppers and salts and taste. So grab what you like. I'm gonna grab the flavors I like. Again, you gotta make sure, check the label. No, that's too high in fat. Oh, I love this. Hot sauce, mild, do you like it mild? Do you like it spicy? What do you like? Whatever the taste is, check the label and get it. Olives, now you know. I mean, if olive oil is high in fat, what do you think of olives? You see, it's a matter of options. Oh, I love these little green spicy peppers. Relishes, cucumbers, these are great. Pickles, you'll learn to find the foods that are low in fat and the brands you like. Now, I know you can't eat these things, but they sure make a table look pretty. So while we're here in the middle of the night, let's grab some plants. Oh, don't hurt the plant. Hold on, let me get, oh, these are beautiful. All right, now these have nothing to do with eating, but I mean, as far as aesthetics are concerned, a little beauty doesn't hurt. Vinegars, this is great. There are so many salad dressings you can make using balsamic vinegar. Do you know that I just found out how to pronounce that balsamic, but I've heard it pronounced a hundred different ways. But there are so many different vinegars. Cider vinegar, there's so much you can do with that. And years ago, I went on a diet where I used to drink this stuff. I smelled like dirty socks for eight months. The oils, you don't need them. Ah, you know those vegetable sprays that you all use? So many of us are under the impression that they're low in fat. You're on the phone, you're spraying the pan, no problem, check the back of these things. They're so high in fat. We don't want those. Dressings. You know you can take a salad and lettuce and tomato and onions and put whatever you want in it and then you can trash it. You can high fat it instantly by pouring a high fat dressing on it. There are so many options today. Look at them all. There are non-oil dressings, there are low-fat dressings, there's creamy without any fat in it. You've got to read the front and the back. You'll find the taste that you like. I love these vinegar dressings. Also, another thing, you'll become so familiar with brand names. There are some, and I can't mention them, but there are some brand names that I like, but sometimes you have to spice them up. They're a little bland. Hold on, I want to show, oh, no oil dressing. No oil dressing, no oil dressing. Now, you gotta walk right past the whole crouton thing. I'm telling you that right now. Walk right past it. Bread. Well, wonder why we're confused about this. Remember the old dieting days when you used to take off the bun and just eat the hamburger? Now you get rid of the hamburger and eat the bun. No wonder we're so confused. Well, there are a lot of different kinds of bread. There's whole wheat, there's white, there's all kinds of breads. You gotta read the ingredients on this one. I'll tell you why. If you turn over a loaf of bread and read ingredients, butter, milk, eggs, you know it's high fat because the ingredients are high fat. If you see whole wheat, water, salt, and whatever else is in bread, then you know it's a low fat bread. If you like whole wheat, buy whole wheat. I mean, it's up to you and your taste. Rye, I can't stand rye. But 
You buy what you like. Sourdough is one of my favorite. My sons and I make sourdough French toast in the morning. I know when you hear French toast, you go, ah! What you think? It's low fat. The bread is low fat. And I'm going to show you how you can deep fat the egg. So it's low fat French toast. Ah, oh, right across the aisle. Look at this. Look at this. A cupcake once in a while, a cinnamon roll once in a while. There's so many low fat items on the market now. Just make sure you're not living on this stuff. Make sure you're eating high volume, low fat food. If you want to have a piece of cake, low fat, they're all over the place. Check it out. You know, stuffing's real interesting. Let's do the fat formula on some stuffing here. Number of fat grams, one gram. One times nine is nine. Oh, this is really low fat, divided by 110 calories. Let's try the stuffing. You know, it's a matter of just making the choices. And again, you're not gonna have to walk around using the fat formula every minute of the day because you're gonna find the brands that are low fat, you're gonna find the taste that you like. So this is gonna help you find the fat and find where the fat isn't. So use it for a first couple of times. It's not that difficult. Sodas. I like soda. Once in a while, I like to drink a glass of soda, especially in the summertime. If we're talking about fat, there's not a lot of fat in soda. There sometimes is a whole lot of sugar. Oh, look. Reminds me of the homeland. Oh, I'm about to drop it, keep it there. Watch this. I wouldn't want to break anything, especially this light. Who would clean it up? Me? Hold on. Have a soda if you want a soda. I do need some toothpaste. Hold on. Oh, while I'm at it, let me get a toothbrush. Now, what we're trying to do here is, is use your supermarket. Don't be afraid to shop. Don't only stay in the aisles that, that are the dieting aisles. You know, I heard when I was changing my body, I heard stay away from all the middle aisles and only go to the left or right. What does that mean? I can't eat anything in the middle aisles? Well, you can't eat ever anything. You can eat anything in every aisle if you make the right choices. Look at this. I want you to spend a second here with me. Look at this. Water! How much water could there possibly be? Look at this, water. Isn't water water? I mean, how, how many kinds of water do we have? A lot of people ask me the question about drinking water to lose weight. What about those eight, nine, ten glasses of water a day I'm supposed to drink? Well, if losing weight was a matter of drinking glasses of water, then I would be a mermaid. I'd be buoyant. That's not what it's about. You should eat when you're hungry and drink when you're thirsty. And when you drink, try and get some nice, natural, clean water in your body, because it's important. I'm going to get a bottle of water for later in the kitchen, sauteing. Oh, OK. We have non-fat, lowest in fat, 1%, 2%. Have you guys noticed that, number one, there's no cholesterol in anything anymore, and everything is lean, light, or low fat? No wonder you're a little confused. I know I get confused. You walk to the milk department, and the first thing a lot of us do is pick up the 2% milk, because it says 2%. Well, let's do the fat formula. Number of fat grams, 5. 5 times 9 equals, divided by calories, 140. 2% equals 32% fat. 2% or 32%? Which one, guys? Put it down and reach for the non-fat. Right here. There's the answer. Yogurt right next to the milk. There are yogurts that are high in fat, and there are yogurts that are low in fat. There are yogurts that are loaded with sugar. There are yogurts with less sugar. Read the labels. I know the brands I like, so I go right for them, and I know they're low in fat. Paper towels. Hey, how'd they get my husband's face on the cover of these paper towels? Big guy paper towels, that's what these are. Frozen foods, a lot of choices here. You know what frozen means to me? It means convenience. Not a lot of us have a whole lot of time. So there's a lot of options in the frozen food section. You gotta really be careful here, though. A lot of the major diet brands have frozen foods for your convenience, and they're not always low in fat. Read the labels, do the fat form. Some of my favorite dessert frozen foods, fruit bars. A strawberry fruit bar is going to be lower in fat than a banana fruit bar. I mean, check it out. A lot of bananas have milk in it. I love the ices. I love the fruit bars. Once in a while, have a dessert. This is about convenience. It's about making it easy for you to make the decisions that you need to make to lower your daily fat intake. You know what shopping should be? A no-brainer. It should not be complicated. Tuna, this is great. Just a moment. 
Let me go grab some gloves for all the gardening I do. Just a moment. <laughs> well, you can always dream. I really do want to start a garden one day, a nice vegetable garden with the boys. This is a great aisle to make a point. Tuna. It's not the tuna that's high in fat. It's the mayo that we put in it. I make a tuna salad with sweet relish, onions, tomatoes. It's fabulous. You make that with your sourdough bread, with your lettuce and tomato and onions. Look what you've got, a great low-fat sandwich. The key to the tuna is what it's packed in. Three ounces of tuna packed in oil is 40% fat. Packed in water, 13% fat. Soups. Again, great point here. Minestrone soups, vegetable soups, bean soups. The cream ones, obviously, they're higher in fat. Check it out. The fat-free vegetable soup has zero grams of fat. New England clam chowder, 18 grams of fat. But instant, you want instant? I run home sometimes, open a can of soup, make my fabulous tuna salad, and bingo, I look like a gourmet chef. It doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes thinking and making the right choices. What do we got here? Soy sauce. Big one in our house. We use a lot of soy sauce. I make dressings with it. I like the salty, spicy, rich taste of it. I mean, don't drink the bottle, but use it if you like the taste of it. Bouillon cubes. You can get, and this is amazing. I mean, when you do the fat formula on these bouillon cubes, you wouldn't believe. I, there's vegetable bouillon now that is usually lower in fat than the beef, but not always. Check the label and make sure. Let me have a look at this. Oh, low sodium. Vegetarian bouillon cubes. I'm going to get a couple of these. Soup base. Ah, here it is right here. My favorite, favorite part, the spices. You know why? You can take something, high volume, low fat, that is kind of bland. And with these, low, low, low fat, fabulous taste. You can make it taste any way you want. What do you feel like? You feel like salty? You feel like garlic? You feel like allspice? What is allspice? Does that mean every spice on the market? It smells terrible, but it tastes good. Bay leaf, chili, ooh, chili powder. Love chili powder. Cinnamon, not cinnamon and sugar, just ground cinnamon. Cinnamon on toast in the morning. I grew up on cinnamon and toast. It was so good. Crackers, 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 crackers. You know, you can't trust these crackers. <laughs> You gotta really watch out. All because something says whole wheat and stone free. Y you can't just assume because it says that, that it's low fat. Again, remember, not healthy, unhealthy, not whole food, not, it's, it's high fat versus low fat. There are some crackers you can have. Now, I know these look like teething biscuits, but they happen to be some of my favorite. Oh, let's finally tell the truth here. It's time to start to tell the truth here. <laughs> Rice cakes. I don't know. I think if you like styrofoam, you're going to like rice cakes. Now, there's some brands that do have some flavorings in them and taste better than the plain, but there's nothing worse than a plain rice cake, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'll go back and get some of the flavorings. All right, all right. I won't be so hard on rice cakes. I do like these. I do like these. Ooh, I like these butter-flavored popcorn ones, too, but not the plain ones. I can't stomach the plain ones. Popcorn, I think popcorn is the most amazing snack in the grocery store. Popcorn is a low-fat food. You do the fat formula on some of these popcorns, they're as high as 57% fat, some of them. I want to know from these food manufacturers, how do you take a non-fat food and make it 57% fat? Use the fat formula, but you know the best thing to do? Buy some corn, just some popcorn. Take it home, put it in your frying pan. I don't use oil. I use a Teflon pan, and I do the old shake over the side. I don't know, it was a grandma used to do it. Somebody used to do it. I stand there like this. The kids and I hear it popping. You open it up, it's done. I put some salt on it. We eat it by the bucket full. Mm, you pretty much peanuts speak for themselves. If it's a nut, it's high in fat. Pasta, 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 pasta. Fabulous pasta, all kinds of pasta, and you don't have to make it yourself. Somebody asked me the other day, do you make your own pasta? Oh, sure. In between business meetings and PTA functions, I go home and make pasta. It comes out in those little strings. No, I don't make my own pasta. But you know what I do make? Pasta salads. I make pasta by the bucket. I put it in the fridge. I come home, I have a soup that I whip up 
out of a can. I put some pasta in and I go, voila, minestrone soup, kids. Spaghetti, well, you all know about spaghetti. I mean, how obvious could we be here? Try it, I don't know, maybe you could use a little amount. Give me my pasta. I'm alone here, I can scream as loud as I want. Pasta, you got little, ooh, look at these. These are like little half shells, mini shells, long ones, bow ones, egg noodles. Round curly ones in big boxes. Whoa, look at the size of these. Now you could use these without the cheese in the middle. Use your imagination with the pasta. It's a very versatile, low fat food. All days of dieting, God forbid you eat pasta. Well, that's all changed, hasn't it? Part of changing the way you look and feel, getting lean, strong, and healthy, is breaking some old habits and creating some new ones. Now, I'm gonna ask you to go out on a limb with me here. I'm not asking you to cut your hair like mine, but I am asking you to think about something. Beans. I know, I know. Beans, beans, good for your, I know, but not if you soak them, you're not gonna have a problem. Red beans, split peas, great northern, great northern, great northern where, who knows? Beans and rice. The versatility of these foods is unbelievable. High volume, low fat, versatile, cheap, so unbelievably inexpensive. That's why in my eating guide, I included a lot of grain and bean recipes. They're foods we're not very familiar with, but they're foods that we need to be more familiar with. You know what? I grew up eating cereal. Jed Clampett bowls of cereal. I love eating cereal. I still, in the middle of the night, if I'm worried about something or just up for whatever reason, I get huge bowls of cereal and I eat them and I think. Could you imagine me at two o'clock in the morning eating cereal and thinking, my husband comes in and goes, whoa, glad I married you. Watch. Don't assume all cereals are low in fat. One of the big things that cereals do is they always say, high fiber, all cereals are such high fiber. Well, they may be high fiber, but that doesn't mean they're low in fat. I know, I know. Check the labels, check the labels, but you got to. When you see bran, all because you see bran, don't assume it's low in fat. I know what I like, I know what my kids like, I know what's high in fat, and I know what's low in fat. And that's what I buy. Nothing wrong with having a big bowl of cereal in the middle of the night, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm here alone, I can do and say whatever I want, can I? Canned veggies. Convenient? Yep. You don't have to look too far to find a lot of canned vegetables that you like. Asparagus, I love asparagus. I don't know if many people do, but I love it. You don't have to look too far, but you do have to check for a couple of things. High sodium, right? Sometimes in canned vegetables, it really gets a little outrageous. Sugar, believe it or not, it's there. Come here. When you see granola, don't assume that because it says granola, again, you got this healthy thing going on. Everything is healthy, everything's lean, everything's light, and everything's low fat. That's why you gotta be the fat detective. The fat detective. Find out where the hidden fat is, and don't just look at healthy fiber. Think, read, and formula, formula, formula. Oh! I thought there wasn't anything I could eat in a grocery store. <laughs> Look at how many choices I'm gonna have to get another cart. Oh, I gotta go back here for a second. Canned fruit, low in fat, not much taste better over your low fat frozen dessert. I do use a lot of jellies and jams. I'm gonna show you how. Lemon curd, ooh, what is this? Well. It doesn't even have the fat grams listed. If it doesn't have the fat grams listed, I don't buy it. Chips and dips, chips and dips. I love chips and dips. How can you be lean and eat chips and dips? Well, I'll show you how. There's a lot of low fat chips on the market. Check the label, check the label. And the bean dips that are around these days, there's so many of them. Now, you can't have chips and dips if you're having cheese dip. Bean dip, why not? When you buy that bean dip, make sure it's not made with oil. Pretzels. This snack aisle brings up a real good point. High volume, low fat eating means that you eat regularly scheduled meals, that when you're hungry, you need to eat. Well, sometimes you're riding in the car, you're in a place that you can eat. You know what I do? I carry food with me. It makes it so convenient, whether it's just a snack until I can get to my lunch or get to my breakfast or get to my dinner. I mean, when you carry around a bag of food, it's like a feed bag. You kind of feel like a horse sometimes. But when you're hungry, you gotta eat pretzels. 
low-fat potato chips, low-fat tortilla chips, bean dips. Go ahead and eat them. Make sure you got plenty on hand because you need to eat. Nowhere is the fat formula more valuable than where I'm sitting right here, the cheese department. You can like cheese. There's nothing wrong with liking cheese, but you got to be real careful here because the ultra, ultra, ultra delight, 72% fat. Now, now, ultra delight. The famous extra, extra, extra light, have a look, check it out, 51% fat. Here's the point. Whatever it is you want, the nachos, I have nachos all the time with the boys. We use black beans and lettuce and tomato and onions and pico de gallo and salsa. They're great nachos. But if you're gonna put the fat in, you're gonna pour the cheese on, boom. It's fat. You gotta really be careful in the cheese department. Use your fat formula, read your labels, and please, especially here, don't believe it when they say light. Look for non-fat, real low-fat cheese. And just be, use it sparingly. You can grate just a little bit of non-fat cheese and sprinkle it on top of the nachos. Use just a little bit, but be careful. Please don't believe the light, 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 light labels you see here. Another area you gotta walk real carefully in. Walk this way. Oh, I'm singing in the grocery store. I think it's getting late, guys. Lunch meats. Want a sandwich? You have the bread, low fat. Lettuce, tomato, onion, sauerkraut, relish, whatever it is you stuff in your sandwiches. So far, we don't have any fat. Slip in the lunch meat. Well, how much fat are you getting? Let's have a look. Use your fat formula on things that say 96% fat free. Number of fat grams, one, into 20 calories. Oh, do the math, guys. It's unbelievably high in fat. Turkey, it isn't always low in fat. You gotta look at the label, turn it around. If you find the brand that you like the taste of, that you know is low fat, again, slip it in the sandwich. But don't assume, because it says 98% fat free, that you can eat the sandwich. Instant little package, lunchable kind of things with little chunks of cheese and chunks of ham and four or five crackers, dangerously high in fat. That doesn't mean you can't have crackers and snacks. It means that these prepackaged things that scream lean at you aren't always lean. Great example right here. Salmon. Everybody thinks fish, it's all low fat. Do the fat formula on fish. See this? The fat grams aren't listed, the calories aren't listed, so now what do you do? Here I am spending the whole time telling you to read labels. There's no labels, Susan. Well, good point. In my fat counter guide, you turn to the page that says salmon, look up salmon, and do the same thing. Number of fat grams times nine equals X. X divided by the total calories will show you that not all fish is low fat. So look at this. You can run the gamut from light tuna at 3% fat all the way to orange roughy at 50% fat. Look at what they do in the middle of the night to the meat department. The cupboard is bare. But I can still tell you about meat, can I? You know that lean red meat is higher in fat, and we're all trying to cut back on it. Not all cuts of meat are created equal. So talk to your butcher, use the fat counter guide, and see what you think. If you're gonna have chicken, remember, get the skin off. It makes all the difference in the world. Don't assume all fish are created equal because you just saw it with salmon, they're not. It's your decision whether or not you want to eat the meat and how much of it you want to eat. It's saturated fat, it's an animal product, and it is high in fat. It's very hard to eat a small enough serving to not have a high amount of fat. It's your decision. But if you do want to eat meat, you gotta think about the difference. For example, you can have ground hamburger meat at 50% fat, sausage, 78%, bacon, 77%. Look at the percentages and see the difference. White chicken without the skin, 15% fat. White turkey, again, without the skin, 13% fat. And ground round, 20%. Ah, oh, the vegetable and fruit aisle.
You know it's high in fiber. You know it's low in calories. You know that when you're on a diet, you have the carrot and the celery sticks. Not anymore. I don't have enough room in my cart for the vegetables or the fruit. Yes, it is a good food. Eat it. Do what you want with it. But look what we got here. High volume, low fat food. Get whatever veggies you want. But right now, we don't have time to get them. Oh, don't miss that aisle, though, over there. The potato aisle. You know I'm real big on potatoes. You know what I hope this is meant to you? I hope, I hope that what, what's happened tonight is that you're more comfortable shopping. I hope that you're not as concerned or confused or, or worried about picking right or wrong. I hope that you see now that it's about high fat versus low fat, that you got to eat food to survive, and that you should eat high volume, low fat food and enjoy. It's time to check out. I may have checked out a long time ago, but right now I'm checking out of this grocery store. Checking out without the checkout people? It's my chance of a lifetime. I've wanted to do this for so long. Watch this. Hi, may I help you? Your friendly server. How do they work these things? Eat it! Hello? Oh, it's a, ah! Well, maybe I shouldn't miss. I may break it. All right, it's time to bag, pay. Oh, I gotta pay. I'll leave them a check right here where they'll see it. Love, Susan. Oh, there. Well, I bet you've never been shopping that late at night. I like it. I think late night shopping is kind of fun. Remember those things that you thought you couldn't live without? Starting with oil, there's a good one. You know all oil is 100% fat? Well, let's restock with a thought. Vegetable broth. Let me find my vegetable broth. This vegetable broth that I'm holding in my hand is zero grams of fat. You can use it to marinate. You can use it as a great soup base. You can use it to saute in. Have you ever thought of sauteing in vegetable broth? Well, it's easy. Besides vegetable broth, you can saute in wine or water. Butter, something we all think we can't live without. Well, since butter is 99% fat, the butter that we did the fat formula on was 99% fat. What did I buy? Jams, jellies, fruit spread, applesauce. Do the fat formula on these and you'll really see an enormous difference. Jam is 0% fat, jelly is 0% fat, and applesauce is 0% fat. As we were defatting the fridge, I tossed the eggs. Well, then I went out and bought another dozen. You know why? Because eggs with the yolk are 63% fat. Here's a simple solution to decreasing the fat. Eliminate the yolk. The egg white, there is no fat. See how making these simple changes makes such a big difference? What I took out of the freezer, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. The stuff that I took out was 56% fat. Frozen dessert right here, tastes fabulous. It's 1% fat. The creamer, I'll show you this. Now remember, you guys have got to use the fat formula on every brand, because every brand is different. Dr. Art Ulean, you know that fabulous doctor from the home show? He showed me the difference between this creamer and a lot of other creamers. I had to share it with you. Well, this says no cholesterol, doesn't it? It also says no dairy, so you think it's really good for you. What they forgot to tell you is that this creamer is 67% fat. Well, I think Dr. Art will agree with me. You use the fat formula and you find out the truth for yourself. Instead of creamer, you can use non-fat or skim milk. Making these simple changes does two things. It allows you to eat what you like and decrease the fat in your life. Well, we've brought all this food. Now let's use it. Through the magic of television, instant food prepared. Bingo! Here's the food. I'll show you the difference that the substitutions can make. Breakfast, a healthy breakfast of granola, you think? A little bit of milk and just a couple of donuts. 42% fat. Let me show you a low-fat breakfast. Egg white omelet stuffed with vegetables. Now this looks good. Four pieces of whole wheat toast and a whole fruit plate, 7% fat. See the difference? Lunch. Here's your high-fat lunch. 
What harm could a bologna sandwich do? Well, this bologna sandwich and just a few chips, 66% fat. Sliced turkey, low fat chips and fruit, 13%. Dinner, here it is, chicken with skin, potatoes with all the stuffing, 71% fat. You can have your chicken just without the skin and grilled, then the potato still stuffed, but stuffed with broccoli and sauteed vegetables and chives and tomatoes and low fat food, 13% fat. Well, we've defatted, we've restocked, and we've shopped. Bedtime! Can you guys believe this? Look at all this stuff. This is about the only time of the day that I get to sit down and spend some time on some letters. Let's get right to the questions so I can help you get the answers, okay? Kansas City wants to know, can I really eat this much food? I know this is a new concept, but do you know what determines your daily caloric intake? One thing that really determines it is your activity level. If you're lying by the lake all day doing nothing but having somebody feed you grapes, then you have to eat less, obviously. Then if you're going, 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 you got the carpool and the job and the husbands and the kids, how much you move, how much you do, how much you require from your body is what determines how much you take in. So yes, you do need to eat this much, but you need to understand it's eating, breathing, and moving that are equally important. All right, Chicago, how many times a day should I eat? What about snacks? Well, this answers part of the first question. Start with what's sane. How about three meals a day? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Don't ever skip a meal again because you know the first symptom of deprivation is binging, shoving food in your mouth. That's not psychological. That's a physiological response to starvation. So don't go for a long period of time requiring your body to move without fuel. Tell you what, start with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want some snacks, eat some snacks. You know when you're hungry. Eat high volume, low fat food. Remember, it's the fat that's making you fat. All right, Baltimore. What about sugar? Can I eat it? Well, yes, you can eat it, but you can't live on it. I'll tell you the thing about sugar. Sugar is highly caloric, meaning for a very small amount, you get a lot of calories and sugar is very dense. So yes, you can have sugar once in a while if you wanna have a low fat cake or a, a low fat yogurt with a lot of sugar in it, but you can't live on it and that's the problem. We take in way too much sugar. Americans take in pounds and pounds and pounds a year of sugar. You can have it, but you can't live on it. What about my children? Their daily fat intake, is it the same as mine? After the age of two, our children's daily fat intake is the same as ours. Children don't need more fat than 30% of their daily intake. That's the American Medical Association's definition of healthy daily fat intake. Our babies are getting fat. Our children are fat and unfit. So yes, let's feed the children high volume, low fat eating. They'll love the taste of it. Don't worry about it. I've been dieting for so long that eating scares me. I understand how eating can scare anybody because it used to scare me. One of the biggest challenges I have is, is teaching people that eating is normal, eating is sane, and eating is something that your body requires as fuel in order to keep going. Here's something I did. In the beginning, when I first changed my body, I started eating small meals five or six times a day because to sit down and eat an enormous meal did frighten me. So try smaller portions, but don't compromise, guys. Eat smaller meals five or six times a day until your body gets used to being fed. There are two things that can hurt a metabolic rate, dieting and no exercise. I'll tell you two things that can help heal a metabolism, can increase a metabolic rate eating and exercise, and that's exactly what eating, breathing, and moving is about. What all of this really boils down to is all of us learning to understand the concept of eating, how to increase the quantity of our food, how to increase the quality of our food, and how to decrease the one thing that we all have too much of, fat. Changing the way you look and feel is about eating, it's about breathing and it's about moving. When you learn to do those three things, you're gonna wake up every morning with a foundation of wellness that will change your life. Thank you all so much for writing to me. Good night.